Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm back here to discuss the championship games that have just taken place this weekend and some absolutely amazing games, including Sunderland 2, Burnley 4, Watford 4, Luton 0 and Sheffield United 2, Norwich 2. So let's get straight into it. If you love sports like me, a sports enthusiast, and you found this video valuable or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you left a comment in the comment section below and you left a like and you subscribed. Let's start off with Charlie Patino's absolute worldie as they beat Blackpool by four goals to two at Bloomfield Road. And really, I think Blackpool deserved to win, to be honest. Jerry Yates continues his fine form as he scored twice in this game. And really, Preston, who this season have been so good at keeping clean sheets, looked so bad defensively. And Blackpool just blitzed them, including, like I said, Charlie Patino's wonderful strike against Preston. It's now back-to-back -back games where Sheffield United at Bramall Lane have produced phenomenal drama and entertainment as they draw at home against Norwich by two goals to two. And really, it was, I mean, so many crazy incidents. First of all, we had Pukki closing down Adam Davis to score to make it 1-0. One, one then he scored again to make it 2-0. There was so much blood and thunder, really. Billy Sharp getting involved in fights. Gwinulis as well. I mean, it was a really entertaining game. Sheffield United eventually made it to back to two all. Then Norwich had a penalty saved, Pukki's hat-trick denied. Sheffield United, I mean, should have had a penalty in my opinion. Just so many crazy incidents. I don't think there was a red card. I don't know how no one got sent off. But yeah, I mean, it's similar to the Blackpool game where Sheffield United drew 3 all at Bramall Lane. This was a really entertaining game. So many fights. And yeah, I think a draw was a fair result in the end. But just so many crazy incidents. And for Norwich, again, it just builds up this kind of negative feeling around Carroll Road to be honest they haven't put in good performances in really all season but they've been getting the results however in the last few weeks they haven't been getting the results anymore and you know this game won't help help Dean Smith's cause given that they were tuna up and they let the game go by the wayside and yes Sheffield United are one of the best teams in the league but the fact they were two 0 up they missed a penalty with the squad they have they would have expected to win that after being two 0 up so I think Dean Smith will be really disappointed and he's got a lot of work to do, in my opinion, to win the Norwich fans over. Then we had another absolutely balmy game. Burnley 4, Sunderland 2 at the Stadium of Light. Sunderland taking the lead and then thinking, well, we're 2-0 up, we're going to cruise. But fair play to Vincent Company's men. I mean, half time came and in the second half they were a completely different team. Nathan Teller continu continues his fine form and career at Burnley so far with another goal and some stunning strikes from the Burnley wingers as well. Overall, I do think Burnley deserve to win this game, but I think Sunderland just really miss Ross Stewart. And I think their squad is quite small, but packed with good quality. But they just miss that focal point up front, in my opinion. It's just clear to see. So I think once Ross Stewart can come back from injury, Sunderland can start climbing the table again and really start pushing for a playoff spot. Another team who continue to falter and fall by the wayside, and that is West Brom. They lose 2-1 at the Den. Of course, Jed Wallace has returned to Millwall. He wasn't always going to get a warm reception with a few boos, but to be fair, I think most of the Millwall fans will appreciate the career Jed Wallace had at Millwall because he was such an influential player for the Lions for so long and for so many seasons. But it was Millwall that came out on top. And again, West Brom, they just did not look good, did they? I'll first talk about Millwall, though. Excellent. And I think that's now four wins in a row for Gary Rowett's team. Of course, Gary celebrated three years in charge at Millwall, and he's done a really good job with this team. And, you know, maybe some Millwall fans might expect them to push on a bit more, but they shouldn't forget they've got one of the lowest budgets in the league. They're competing with teams like West Brom, who have got parachute payments, and Mill just outfought them, outclassed them, and in the end, definitely deserved to win. But for West Brom, things just go from bad to worse there. And the current manager in charge there is the under-21s manager, and he seems like to have a good reputation, but at the moment, it, it almost just seems like a poison chalice, that club. So many ageing players on big wages just not performing well, they can't find the right system and maybe earlier in the season they had good performances but weren't getting the results but now the performances aren't very good and you know make no mistake I don't think West Brom are going to stay up, uh, sorry, <laughs> get promoted. Stay up, I mean they probably will given the squad they have, assuredly, I mean with Wallace, Carl and Grant, Swift, I mean these are big names in the championship, you'd expect them to stay up but Who's going to be in charge of that club? They'll, pro I mean, I see them pointing a new manager after the World Cup or maybe just before the World Cup. But yeah, it's it's not looking great for West Brom at the moment, is it? Another game with six goals, which is absolutely unbelievable. Rotherham two, Hull four. And the question really here is: Should Dawson get the full time job at Hull? I mean, 
Their form has been patchy under him, to say the least. But this was a really great performance against a Rotherham team that have got a new manager and have looked okay this season. So for Hull to score four times, and Oscar Estepina didn't even get a single one of them, and Hull won 4-2. Absolutely unbelievable. Jacob Greaves getting his first goal for Hull. A really important defender for them, one of their best players. So fair play to Hull. Should Dawson get the full-time job there? Rovers 2, Blues 1. Rovers continue their fine, excellent home form after beating Blues by two goals to one. Not an easy game necessarily. I mean, going into this season, Blues looked really, really poor given the issues they have off the pitch, their lack of squad depth on the pitch, their ageing squad. But I must say, John Eustace has got such a good tune out of this group. Their midfield looks young. I mean, I say it's an ageing group aside from the midfield. You've got JJ and Joe Bellingham and George Hall, all very young, exciting players for Blues. And John Eustace has got the absolute most out of the squad, in my opinion. And this was always going to be difficult for a game for Rovers, given the form that Blues are in. And I thought Blues would win because Rovers' form is just so inconsistent and so patchy. But to be fair, their home form is very good. And in the end, they did get the win. The only thing that Rovers might be concerned about, really, is the fact that Sam Gallagher got injured. And yes, Ben Brereton diaz is their main striker. But you need other players around Diaz to contribute to goals. And Sam Gallagher is a good championship goal scorer. If he's out for a while, then that will massively dent Rovers' chance of reaching the playoffs or even reaching automatics. But for Blues, look, Rovers are very good at home, so they shouldn't feel too disheartened. They still had a relatively good start to the season. Coventry continue their fine form after beating Stoke by two goals to nil. Of course, going into this game, Coventry were in the relegation zone because of the lack of matches they've played at home, because of the issues they've had in the Rico Arena, and they've had postponed fixtures, and they haven't quite got the wins they've perhaps deserved, but recently they're starting to rack up the wins. I think three wins in a row now, beating Sheffield United and Stoke, they're going to climb the table. And for them, Gustav Hamer came back into the team and looked class, really, really tidy midfielder. If he could just not get suspended or injured, he could be one of the best midfielders in the championship. So I've got no doubt that Mark Robbins will continue to perform well as Coventry manager and he'll get this team up the table. But for Stoke and Alex Neal, I guess it's been a mixed start for his tenure. Some really horrific defeats like losing to Reading and losing to Coventry. But then at the same time, they convincingly beat Preston and Sheffield United. So kind of a mixed start for Stoke. I hope Alex Neal gets given gets given time there. You know, obviously he jumped ship at Sunderland to move to Stoke. So I imagine it will take a massive offer for Alex Neal to ever move away from Stoke. So if he were to leave, it would probably be because he's sacked. But looking at Alex Neal's record as a manager, especially with regards to promotions, like he gets teams out of division. So I do think that if Stoke give Alex Neal a chance, then Alex Neal can take this team higher up the table, but kind of a mixed start really for him as Stoke manager. Then we've got my team Reading beating Bristol City by two goals to nil. I was at this game and I must say Bristol City were bad. They weren't organised at all and look, going forward they've got some really exciting players. Alex Scott looks a real talent. Semenyo and Wells normally are very good, especially Semenyo and Martin and Vyman are goal scorers at this level, but none of them clicked and Bristol City were just really bad. I mean, the goal they conceded from the set play was really poor. And Nigel Pearson just seems to cannot get this team to defend well. He either sacrifices the attack or just lets the attack loose. And then Bristol City concede tons of goals. But look, Reading weren't amazing by any means, but they just did enough to win the game. They got themselves in front. And we know with this Reading team, if they get themselves in front, especially at home, they're very good at keeping a lead. Now, I say that knowing that midweek they came from they were 2-0 up and lost 3-2 but that's a rarity that's an anomaly that doesn't normally happen with this Reading team and they were away from home against an informed Swansea team but normally when Reading go in front especially at home they hold on for the win and as a Reading fan it was great to see players like Mate come back and start in the starting 11 Andy Carroll and Shane Long coming on and combining to get the second goal. So, you know, as a Reading fan, we're on 25 points after 16 games. It's brilliant. And I'll absolutely take that all day long. I just want this team to stay up and stabilise and show signs that we can actually build something for next season. So I will take this win all day long, especially now that Reading play Burnley and Watford soon. Then we have QPR 2, Wigan 1. And I was kind of concerned from QPR's point of view going into this game because Chris Willock was still out injured. 
the sooner he comes back for QPR, the better. But in the end, Lyndon Dykes' good form continues. He got a goal here in this game. I, th I think he scored twice, but he certainly got a goal in this game. And for QPR, they look relatively comfortable. You know, they look at, like a good shot in the playoffs. I guess the whole backdrop with this game was the fact that Mick Beal was potentially going to move away. But he reassured the QPR hierarchy and the fans that he was going to stay and not move to Wolves. And hey, more power to the QPR fans and Mick Beal because the fact they've managed to keep Mick Beal was a massive, massive dub for them. He is a brilliant, turns out to be a brilliant manager. And I think if Chris Willock can come back soon and not too many players get injured after the World Cup, why can't they push for a top two finish? They look really good. I mean, for Wigan, their great start to the season, just declining now. They're starting to lose quite a few games. Look, all, when going into this season in the Championship, their main goal was just to stay up. And they started very well, and their goal remains the same, just to stay up. They've given themselves a great shot at staying up. But looking at this Championship this season, you've got, you've got the likes of Huddersfield, you know, player finalists last season, Middlesbrough who spent so much, and Coventry all in the relegation zone at some point. It's a really competitive championship season. So for Wigan, it's disappointing that they lost, but they've still had a really good start to the season overall. But maybe they need to pick up one or two more wins before the World Cup. And then I mentioned these two teams, Borough and Huddersfield. They played out a nil-nil draw. Probably the less said about this game, the better. But what I will say is that Michael Carrick is set to be named the Middlesbrough manager. He's just finalising his backroom staff. And I'm really interested to see how this appointment goes. It's his first major job as a manager. We've seen great ex-England players in Steven Gerrard and Frank Lampard kind of have mixed results as managers. Michael Carrick, well, we don't know what his playing style is going to be like, really. We'll have to find out, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out. And then finally, let's talk about two massive derbies that took place on Sunday, and it was two home wins for Watford and Swansea. I'll talk about Watford first. I'm very surprised by the result. I think a lot of people are. I mean, going into this game, Watford were in really bad form, just playing so badly. Against Millwall, they were absolutely pathetic and deserved to lose 3-0. While Luton, their form was continuing to grow especially as an away team, they're really strong. But Watford absolutely battered them, and it just shows that they were really up for this game. You know, João Pedro and Saar scored. Luton had a man sent off. Overall, just a horrific day for Luton. It shouldn't damper their season overall, because overall they've had a great season. But this is a really, really bad blemish for them, as it's a you know big local derby, fans back in the stadium, not good for Luton. But for Watford, I mean... <sighs> Even though this team have been playing badly, with Slavin Bilic as manager and with Saar and especially Pedro in the starting eleven, they've always got a chance of winning games at this level. Like Pedro and Saar, for me, are just far too good for this division. So as long as Watford keep those two players, they can easily climb at the table. You know what I mean? Then finally, Swansea 2, Cardiff 0 in the South Wales derby. Swansea continue their fine form. Excellent win for them. Cardiff's cause wasn't helped by the fact that Callum Robertson got sent off for violent conduct. As soon as that happened from there, Swansea were always going to dominate possession even more and just create loads of chances. And once they went ahead through Ollie Cooper, I think it was just a kind of really formality for Swansea. And they continue their fine form, like I said, and they continue to climb up the table. But for Cardiff and Mark Hudson, since Steve Morrison has been sacked, Mark Hudson has been in temporary charge for a while now. I don't know whether he should be taken charge full time on a full time basis. I imagine the Cardiff hierarchy will probably make a decision once the World Cup starts whether they just give it to Mark Hudson to the end of the season or someone else. But losing to your local rivals won't help Mark Hudson's cause. So that's the championship review. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you found this video of value or entertaining, please like and subscribe. I'd really, really appreciate that. And let me know what kind of videos you want me to make in the comments below because I love talking about football, but I just love talking about all sports. Ultimately, I'm a sports enthusiast. I don't want to come across as someone that is a sports expert, just someone that's interested in sport and learning more about sport and trying to provide as much value to people that watch my content as much as possible. So I'd really appreciate it if you left constructive comments in the comment section. So be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Thank you very much.